The entrepreneurial spirit runs deep in the U.S. It can be found in products and places across the landscape of Americana. It can also be found within a frosty mug, brimming with ice-cold, creamy root beer, with two distinct letters and an ampersand. A and W can stand for America's favorite root beer, but for Roy Allen, A and W could have stood for what those frothy mugs brought him, a windfall. As a young man, Allen headed to California in search of a new life and new opportunities. While working in the hotel business, he met a pharmacist who boasted that he'd created the perfect formula for root beer. Allen, ever the entrepreneur, purchased the recipe. In 1919, the town of Lodi, California welcomed back soldiers returning from World War I with a parade. Allen, joining in the festivities, set up a root beer stand where he sold mugs of his delicious brew for five cents each on a hot summer day. That next January in 1920, Prohibition took effect Soda sales skyrocketed, especially for root beer, because beer was in the name. Allen's business began to roll. He opened more stands and sold more root beer. Allen then teamed up with Frank Wright. They rebranded their drink A&W, A for Allen and W for Wright. The pair leased a few stands to other operators, allowing them to expand in Sacramento with the opening of its first drive-in restaurant. This location was actually the first ever drive-in in California. Wright eventually bowed out, leaving Allen in charge once again. He also left his mark though, because the W hung around too. By 1925, A&W had restaurants in California, Texas, and Utah. By 1930, there were nearly 200 locations in the West and the Midwest. Here are a few of A&W's claims to fame. A&W was the first franchised fast food chain. Owners could use the name and logo, as well as serve the signature drink. To maintain consistency across the franchises, Allen created a system of selling the top secret root beer concentrate to each franchise owner. There was no common menu, no common building, or even common procedures. Some even began to sell food. By 1950, when Allen retired and sold his business, there were nearly 450 A&Ws. By 1960, just 10 years later, there were more than 2,000 A&W restaurants. In 1963, A&W chairman Dave Mulder added a new item to the menu and he introduced a new phenomenon, the bacon cheeseburger. That's right, folks. You can thank A&W for creating that deliciousness. In 1971, A&W root beer became available in bottles and cans, thus making it even more accessible to the public. Restaurants, though, make their root beer fresh in each store daily. There was a short stint of using concentrate to try to save both money and space, but that was short-lived, and the company switched back to brewing up fresh batches of the special blend of herbs, bark, spices, and berries.
A&W celebrated their 100th anniversary in 2019, making it older, in fact, than even sliced bread, which didn't come on the scene until 1928. Over a million gallons of A&W root beer are consumed each year worldwide. California still holds the top spot for the most A&W restaurants, followed by Wisconsin and then Michigan. Allen's first customers were American soldiers and their families during that homecoming parade, and the commitment to American veterans has remained. Every year, on August 6th, A&W hosts the National Root Beer Float Day. The chain serves up free root beer floats, asking for donations to support the Disabled American Veterans, a nonprofit organization that helps veterans with job placement, doctor visits, and other helpful resources. A&W has survived for over 100 years, and they're still going strong today. The classic root beer float and juicy bacon cheeseburgers are American food icons. In those two capital letters, A and W, icons in their own right, they continue to charm taste buds every day. Thanks for watching Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana.